you are about to learn how to drive or you just started perhaps you are almost ready for your driving test or you've been driving for several years but still struggle to use the steering wheel in this video we will address questions like sitting position the importance of vision when driving how to hold the steering wheel what's the correct way to steer a car at bends and intersections how to straighten the steering wheel after a turn and examples of how to use the steering wheel at different bends turns and maneuvers if you are new to the channel consider subscribing for more driving related videos the first thing to keep in mind is our sitting position we especially want to pay attention to the seat height so that we are not seated too low or too high the seat recliner needs to be set at the correct angle so that we are not too relaxed or too bent how far we are from the pedals we want to make sure that we can reach the pedals without a lot of efforts we also should not be seated too close to the pedals as we won't be able to operate the pedals properly also we want to pay attention to the shoes that we are wearing as we want to feel the pedals when pressing the brake pedal the accelerator pedal or the clutch pedal if we are driving a manual transmission shoes like boots or high heels are not recommended for driving especially for beginner drivers how far we are from the steering wheel being too far from the steering wheel will make it harder to reach the steering wheel our arms shouldn't need to extend too much we also don't want to be too close to the steering wheel as our ability to move the steering wheel will be limited the steering wheel has an airbag to protect the driver in case of an accident and sitting too close to the steering wheel is not safe if we are already close enough to the pedals but we still cannot reach the steering wheel we can move the steering wheel closer most vehicles allow the driver to move the steering wheel up down or closer the next thing to pay attention to is where we look when we are steering vision is the most important aspect of driving and ignoring it will make steering a car very challenging the trick is to look where we want our car to go then steer the car to go there it's not steer then look it's look first then steer let me give you an example here i'm about to turn left so i slow down look left first then steer the car to go left a lot of people learning how to drive tend to look at what they are afraid of hitting in other words looking and focusing the eyes on the danger the issue with this is that where we look is where we tend to go so if we look at the danger which is what we are afraid of hitting we are more likely to go towards the thing that we are afraid of hitting the trick is to look at where we want to go then steer to go there as an example here i'm about to go straight at this roundabout if i stare at this middle island i'm more likely to get too close to it and potentially hit the curb the correct way to do this is first i need to slow down give way to any vehicles inside the roundabout look at where i want the car to go so in this case i need the car to move to the left of the island so i look left first then steer the car in that direction basically we are avoiding looking at the problem which is the thing that we are afraid of hitting but we look at the solution instead which is where we want the car to go another thing to always do is not to look near but look far why is this important when we look further down the road we are getting into the habit of anticipating and planning by looking far our eyes feed the information to our brain our brain then communicates these informations to our hands and feet allowing us to steer and press the correct pedal people who anticipate will always have better control of the vehicle so the question is if we look far won't we miss things which are near the answer to this is no by looking far we can also see things which are near but by looking near we won't see things which are far as an example here we are driving in this residential area i'm looking far ahead and i see these vehicles approaching but i can also see these cars which are near me and some of them are appearing in my peripheral vision so even though i fix my eyes ahead 
I can still see cars which are nearby out of the corner of my eyes. But imagine if I was fixing my eyes on these cars which are near only. I won't be able to see these other vehicles approaching from far. So remember, by looking far, we can also see things which are near. But by looking near, we cannot see things which are far. Another trick is to alternate where we focus our eyes. For example, here I could glance at the parked vehicles for about a second or so, then immediately focus my eyes back to where I want to go. And I can keep bouncing my focus between looking far and looking near. So remember, if we are driving on a straight road, we look far and aim the steering wheel in the middle of our lane. If we are driving through a bend, look at the end of the bend and steer into the bend. If we want to go left, look far to the left, then steer left. If we want to go right, look far to the right, then steer right. Next, let's talk about how to hold the steering wheel. With holding the steering wheel, we treat the steering wheel as a clock. If this is a clock, this is 12, this is 6, this is 3, and this is 9. The first holding position is the tradition 10-10 position, also commonly known as 10 and 2 position. Now, I know some people may say that this is an old way of holding the steering wheel and shouldn't be used anymore. And other people say that this is the only acceptable way that we should hold the steering wheel, but we will not get into that debate in this video. The 10-10 or 10 and 2 position is still fine and your driving examiner will be happy if you use it. Of course, this holding position won't work if you have a car with a yoke steering wheel, but 99% of the vehicle on the road today, 10 and 2 still works fine. The next holding position is the 9-15 position, which is also commonly known as 9 and 3 position. Again, some people say that we shouldn't hold the steering wheel like this and other people say that this is the only acceptable way we should hold the steering wheel but again we will not get into that debate in this video what i can tell you is that holding the steering wheel at 9 15 is safe works and the driving examiner will be more than happy if you hold the steering wheel at 9 15 on your driving test what is not fine though is holding the steering wheel too high or too low for example 720. These holding positions are not safe and will affect the way we control the car. Also, we should avoid putting our hands inside the steering wheel. Putting hands inside the steering wheel come with enormous risks because if we get involved in an accident, we can damage our hands and wrists. Remember there is an airbag inside the steering wheel. If the airbag deploys during a collision and we have our hands inside the steering wheel, our arms will come flying towards our forehead, which is not good. It can even get worse if someone is wearing a wristwatch because that wristwatch will hit the forehead resulting in serious injuries. So don't put your hands inside the steering wheel. Our thumbs need to be on the steering wheel, not inside because if we get involved in an accident, we can damage our thumbs. Also, we should not put our thumbs outside as it's harder to move the steering wheel if the thumbs are outside. So on the steering wheel and not inside or outside. Now let's talk about how much to move and turn the steering wheel for different types of turns. For straight roads, we don't have to move the steering wheel that much. In fact, car manufacturers design the car to move in a straight line without too much input from the driver. We should steer a little here and there and avoid moving the steering wheel all the time, at least not like in video games. As an example, here I'm driving on this straight one lane road. You can see that we can just keep our hands at 10, 10 or 10 and 2 holding position and barely move the steering wheel. I'm moving the steering wheel a little here and there, but not that much. I can do the same thing if I'm holding the steering wheel at 9.15 or 9 and 3. Even if I remove my hands, you can see that the car still moves in a straight line by itself. 
in this example we are driving on a straight road but this time it's a multi-lane road here also we can just keep our hands at the same position and do only minor changes to the steering wheel as we continue to look far and drive straight the same goes for motorway we barely move the steering wheel to better understand the steering wheel check this out this is a quarter turn this is half turn this is three quarter of a turn. This is one turn. And this is one and a half of a turn. So you can see that for the tires to move from straight to full lock, we turn the steering wheel about one and a half turn. By the way, full lock means turning the steering wheel all the way until it can no longer turn. To put the tires back to straight, we have to turn the steering wheel one and a half turn to the left. For small bends, we keep our hands in the normal holding position. So 10, 10 or 9, 15, depending on how we are holding the steering wheel. Then move the steering wheel about quarter of a turn while our hands are still in the normal holding position. Most of the time, we move the steering wheel about a quarter of a turn for small bends. As an example, we are facing a small bend, which is about 45 degrees or less. In this situation, we just keep our hands in our normal holding position, look as far as possible towards the end of the bend, then move the steering wheel about quarter of a turn to follow the bend. So 9.15, then move the steering wheel about quarter of a turn. Or 10.10, 10, then move the steering wheel about quarter of a turn without moving our hands. When we turn the steering wheel to about a quarter of a turn, our hands can move freely. However, once we turn the steering wheel more than a quarter of a turn, our hands kind of like start crossing, which is not good as we can lose control of the vehicle if we are not careful. So the question is, what can we do in this case? This is where steering techniques comes in, and there are two steering techniques we need to know in order to become skillful drivers. The first technique, which is the one we need for bigger bends, is the pull push steering technique. Let's say I want to turn the steering wheel left. I put my left hand on the top at the 12 o'clock position. Right hand can remain at 2 or 3 o'clock. Then pull down with the left hand. While pulling down with the left hand, the right hand is sliding to meet the left hand at the bottom. This is how the pull push would look like without pause. So pull down with the left, push with the right pull down with the left, then push with the right hand. If we are going to turn right, we would put our right hand on top, then pull down with the right hand while pushing with the left hand, and pull with the right while pushing with the left. This technique can take some time to get used to, hence why some people don't like it, but with practice you can learn it. For most bends, we need to pull down only. We don't need to push. Let's look at some examples using sharp bends. First, let's deal with the left hand side bend. As we approach, we slow down a little, put our left hand on the top to prepare for the bend, look far towards the end of the bend, then pull down with the left hand to about half of a turn. Next, we have a right hand side bend. We put our right hand on top, look far to the right at the end of the bend, then pull down with the right hand to about half of a turn. Once we are about to exit the bend, we straighten the steering wheel. Another thing to consider when approaching a bend is the speed of our vehicle. Although this is a topic for another day, we should remember that before the bend, the visibility is not that good. So we slow down before the start of the bend and accelerate as we are about to exit the bend. When we are exiting the bend, the visibility improves so we can start increasing the speed. For left and right turns, we usually have to turn the steering wheel about half turn to three quarter of a turn depending on the angle of the turn. Let's look at some examples. In this example, we are turning left. So I put my left hand on top, slow down, then look into the turn as far as possible, then pull down with the left hand 
and push a little with the right hand. This left turn needed the steering wheel to turn about three quarter of a turn. Next, we are turning right. So I slow down before the turn, give way to oncoming traffic, look where the car is going to go, then pull down with the right and push with the left hand. This turn also needed the steering wheel to turn about three quarter of a turn. In another example, I want to turn left at the end of the T intersection. So I slow down. Here we need to position a little to the left. So I turn the steering wheel about a quarter of a turn. I then need to give way, put my left hand on top, look where I want the car to go, then pull down a little with the left hand. This turn needed me to turn the steering wheel about half of a turn. When parking, or doing some kind of U-turns, we usually do what is commonly referred to as full lock, which is where we turn the steering wheel all the way until it locks. This time, the pull-push steering technique is not the best for this. We use the hand-over-hand -hand steering technique instead. Here is a quick demonstration of hand-over-hand -hand steering technique. Let's do hand-over-hand -hand on the right. Hands at the 10 and 2 position this time. Turn the steering wheel about quarter of a 10 to the right. Then right hand over, left hand under, right hand over, left hand under, and keep walking until we reach full lock. Here's how hand over hand plays out without pausing. It's kind of like walking. As an example, let's use hand over hand to do a three point turn. So we put the car in gear, look around, then indicate. Move the steering wheel about quarter of a turn, then right hand over, left hand under, right hand over, and left hand under. We then continue walking until we reach full lock. We now need to steer left while reversing. First, we put the car in reverse and turn the steering wheel about quarter of a turn, then start walking. Left hand over, right hand under, left hand over, and right hand under until we reach full lock. To do the final movement of the three point turn, we put the car in drive and then turn the steering wheel about quarter to the right and then start walking. So right hand over, left hand under, right hand over, left hand under until we reach full lock. One important thing to not ignore is speed. If the car is moving slowly, we have to turn the steering wheel more as compared to high speed. At high speed, the car will respond more to even a slight move of the steering wheel. Next time, if you are a passenger on the motorway or on the main road, for example, pay attention to how much the driver is actually moving the steering wheel. You will notice that it's actually hard to tell if they are even moving the steering wheel at all. The fact of the matter is that they are actually moving the steering wheel except that it's only by just a little bit. What about straightening up the steering wheel after a turn? If we are driving at low to medium speeds, we let the steering wheel self-straighten, but make sure our hands stay in contact with the steering wheel. For example, here I'm doing about 30 km per hour, so if I let the steering wheel slide in my hand, it will self-straighten. If we are driving at a very slow speed, we manually straighten the steering wheel. As an example, here I'm doing a speed of less than 10 km per hour at this turn. If I try to let the steering wheel self-straighten, it won't straighten, so I have to actually be the one to straighten the steering wheel. If we are making a turn, and we want the steering wheel to self-straighten, we can use a little bit of accelerator. The method of letting the steering wheel self-straighten is recommended, but remember what straighten the steering wheel is the accelerator or the speed of the car. It does take practice to learn how to let the steering wheel self-straighten, because if we don't use enough accelerator, the steering wheel won't self-straighten. And if we use excessive accelerator, our turn might not be that smooth. So take your time when learning how to let the steering wheel self-straighten. Also, use the right amount of accelerator. Of course, you can always assist the steering wheel if it does not self-straighten. 
One of the questions that many people ask is, will I get marked down on my driving test if I let the steering wheel self-straighten? If you let the steering wheel self-straighten, but keep your hands on the steering wheel and maintain good control of the vehicle, you will not get marked down. If you let the steering wheel self-straighten and keep your hands on the steering, but don't control the car properly, you will get a minor driving error recorded. If you let the steering wheel self-straighten, but remove both hands from the steering wheel while the car is straightening up, you will get a critical driving error recorded and you fail the driving test. Finally, here are a few things not to do when operating the steering wheel. Number one, holding the steering wheel too tight. Number two, putting hands inside the steering wheel. Number three, putting one hand at the top of the steering wheel. Number four, driving with one hand, especially when going through a sharp bend or a turn. Number five, removing both hands from the steering wheel. Number six, not doing the pull push properly. Number seven, keeping hands crossed for more than a second while doing hand over hand. Number eight, steering with your knees. Number nine, steering with a finger. Number 10, jerking the steering wheel. That's it for this video and I hope you learned something from it. If you enjoyed watching this video, you can give it a like and consider subscribing for more driving related videos. Remember, practice makes progress and if you are doing a driving test soon, I wish you the best of luck. See you in the next video.